This video was originally supposed to be released on November 3rd, 2023. It's been a very long few months and not an ideal time for video making. However, due to my love for Super Mario Bros. Wonder and wanting an excuse to play it again, I decided to unarchive the script and finish the video for it. But not wanting to revise a script to take place 3 months after the game released, let's just pretend it's November 3rd. Ha! Ah, ahoy! What, I'm uh, making a video about Super Mario Bros. Wonder? <laughs> That's odd. So blue, this game came out 17 days ago. It's ancient history. Nobody cares about it anymore. Well, I still do. But why am I making a video about it 17 days after it released? Well, I've been busy. Oh my god, I'm an elephant! Oh, fuck yeah! Super Mario Bros. Wonder, our first brand new 2D Mario experience on the Switch. As long as you don't count Mario Maker 2. Now before we talk about this, a uh, couple of comments on these. The new Super Mario Bros. series has been quite polarizing. People constantly calling the games repetitive and rehashed, and, well, they are. But looking at it from my perspective, I got a DS as a child with new Super Mario Bros. and loved it. Then I got it on Wii shortly after it came out and I loved it even more, especially because of the simultaneous 4 player mode. Now while we give a solid <coughs> about that these days, but back in the day it was huge even though a lot of people shit on it. Listen, it wasn't about functionality with this mode. We gotta remove the functionality and leave the fun, and that's what it was. With three other people in the room, the goal wasn't to beat the game. We were all playing around and messing with each other, throwing our friends into pits. Now in 2013, before the Wii U dropped it like it's hot, I stopped paying attention to video games, meaning I missed out on New Super Mario Bros. 2 and New Super Mario Bros. U. In a short time span, I can imagine why people got hit with the staleness. Me, on the other hand, I got out of the party before it got weird. But then, I get back into video games in 2020, I get a Switch, and naturally my love for all things Italian, led me to inevitably getting Mario U Deluxe, a re-release of the 2D Mario game from the Wii U. It would be my first time playing it, and even after not playing any 2D Mario game for almost 7 years at that point, I still felt that staleness from the game. Don't get me wrong, I still enjoyed it, I 100%ed the game, and you don't do that if you hate a game. Let's just ignore the fact that I platinumed Greyhill Incident, but that's besides the point. It felt like just a Mario game. But I'm also playing Devil's Advocate here. They could release this exact same type of game every 6 months and I'd still play them. Because I'm a Mario fan, I'm a an idiot. But they didn't do that, instead this year dropped a trailer for Super Mario Bros. Wonder, a game that looked, for lack of a better term, wonderful. 2D Mario was back and it looked different and had some cool new stuff going on. I saw the trailer, I was hooked. I didn't watch any subsequent trailers, I just sat and waited patiently until it was time to check my refrigerator. If you get that reference, I love you. So the game starts with Mario and gang hanging out in the Flower Kingdom until Bowser shows up and steals the Wonder Flower transforming himself into a castle. Which hey, you know what? Everyone has their aspirations. Some want to be a doctor, some want to be a pro athlete, I want to be a cathedral. Mario and his gang of Jesus 11 other buddies are joined by our Flood slash Luma slash Cappy of this game, Prince Florian, who's a caterpillar who rides our back and gives us numerous different abilities and forms of badges, but I'll get to that in a second. We are off to explore the various worlds collecting our stars slash sprites slash moons of this game, Wonder Seeds, to inevitably obtain a royal seed to help stop Bowser. So gameplay wise, it's the 2D Mario formula of starting at the left, making it to the right and not dying in the middle. It's all very familiar Mario stuff, but all the animations are brand new which makes the game feel very fresh. When I played Mario U Deluxe, I felt the same shit a different game attitude right about here. So what's new to this not new Super Mario Brothers? Starting with the roster, Daisy is playable for the first time in a 2D Mario game which is pretty cool. We got Toadette returning without her weird Princess Peach form, Blue and Yellow Toad, Peach and Luigi are all here too. We also have joining us 4 different colored Yoshis and Nabbit who act as the easy mode of this game, meaning they don't take damage from enemies. Now something I wished Mario U had was a better distinction between characters via abilities. You know, like 3D World or Mario 2. Save floatiness for Peach, flutters for Luigi, and speed for Toad. We don't get that here with Mario Wonder, except for the Yoshis who keep their insatiable appetite and flutters. Side note, I hate that their mouths do this. It looks nasty. Ew. 
I'm slightly disappointed by the lack of character specific abilities because it was right there in the game to not have it be that way. So earlier I mentioned badge abilities via Prince Florian, remember the Caterpillar. You earn them throughout the game and can select them at the start of each level. These abilities include hovering, wall jumping upwards, having a vine as a sort of grappling hook, sensing items or secrets, running at blazing speeds, having a mid-air spin or becoming a better swimmer. Some of these are pretty great, but some of them are pretty useless or shitty. Like this spring one that constantly has us bouncing which is almost as annoying as the spring from Mario Galaxy. And there's the one that turns you invisible to hide from enemies, but it also makes you invisible to the player, meaning am I the f***ing enemy? So you, yeah you, won't see yourself jump off a cliff. This is supposed to be a power up. A lot of these badges I only use during bash challenges because we are forced to use them. I, on the other hand, never really use any of these badges because the first badge we get in the game is undoubtedly the best one. The Parachute Cap, where we use our hat to hover and slow our fall. If used correctly, the Parachute Cap can mimic other badges, making the rest of them pointless. Now still, having these many options is great, but what I'm saying is that having more options isn't better. Having better options is better. If you just take some of the skills with these badges and make it exclusive to some of the characters, it'd be neat. The Luigi Flutter is a badge and seeing other characters do it feels weird, like he's gonna come to my house with a lawsuit over it. And giving Nabbit, the easy setting, the badge that lets him recover from pitfalls makes so much sense. I guess I'm whining about it because whenever someone besides Mario or Luigi uses the parachute cap, they just randomly take out a hat to hover and it doesn't look as natural. Also in multiplayer the Yoshis can be ridden by other players. People loved it in the trailer, but if we're being honest, it's only good for a come on bro, come ride me bro joke and that's about it. What, am I supposed to get on you and let you do all the playing for me? Maybe it's for when mom makes you play with your little brother so you have him ride you to get him out of the way. Oh, the days of just giving him an unplugged controller. Okay, so I might have just spent the last paragraph complaining, but let's be honest, I'm being a little bitch. Because Super Mario Wonder is an amazing game. It's so much fun that I didn't care to nitpick. So with every new Mario game, the question is, what are the new power-ups? First, we got the Drill Mushroom, which is based on a drill from Mario Galaxy 2. We use it to bury ourselves in rock to defeat enemies and navigate tiny crevices. It does also give head protection against danger from above, which is a nice tiny detail. We also got the Bubble Flower, which does the exact same thing the disgusting baby blue Yoshis did in Mario U. Lastly, we have the Wowie Zowie power-up, turning us into a hulking elephant with a mean trunk to pound blocks, enemies, and fill water with to keep our ecosystem going. Honestly, the best power-up in the game. Now the last power-up is less of a power-up and is more of an event trigger that each level has. The Wonder Flower. One is hidden in every stage and when we find it, Mario and gang go into some weird bizarre LSD trip that changes the level and gameplay. And honestly, these things are incredible! Every level has something different going on with its Wonder Flower and it's so much fun seeing what they are and playing through it. Sometimes the level itself gets funky, the enemies get altered to either be trying to kill you in droves or singing you a musical. Sometimes we turn into an enemy and have to navigate the course, most notably the Goombas where we are slow, helpless and constantly preyed upon by these dogs. It's horrifying! Apparently in this game's 4 year development, there were roughly 2000 ideas for these sequences thought of and they went with the best ones. This variety helps keep the game fresh and exciting with each level. At the end of these wonder sequences, we get a wonder seed. We also get another wonder seed at the end of each flagpole, meaning each traditional level has at least two wonder seeds for us to find. Other types of levels in this game are badge challenges and little puzzles which are nice ways to break up the levels and keep the game engaging. It's time to talk about the overworld, cause it deserves some praise. Now it's almost US law that the second world in every 2D Mario game is a desert stage. Well, Mario Wonder, you little scoundrel, am I seeing a world 2 with no sand? Super Mario Wonder breaks tradition as not only is the usual order not being hashed out, but we'll sometimes see two different themes for worlds. Here World 2 is not only not a desert, but it's snow levels for the first half and sky for the second. Now we have a central overworld that connects the rest of the world called Petal Isles, where in between each world we have a couple of Petal Isle stages to get through. Kinda like a Hyrule field. After beating Shining Falls, we can knock out the 4th, 5th and 6th world in any order we like, granted we have the Wonder Seeds to do so. Now, throughout most of the world map we roam freely kinda like in 3D world, 
But something that I complained about in that game was the fact that the overworld didn't have much going on to warrant this freedom. Well, Mario Wonder doesn't make that mistake, because when we get to the desert world, we gotta find levels that are hidden throughout and even solve a puzzle to access one. The magma world starts with a castle right there, but we don't have enough wonder seeds to access it, so we gotta venture into the depths to find levels to collect those seeds, and it's so unconventional for Mario, it's amazing! There are 8 worlds in a game, 9 if you count the secret world. And not every world ends with a castle. Hell, there aren't even towers that have waypoints, though some occasional Bowser ships do appear. But sometimes the world just ends. Like in World 5, the story was a bunch of Flower Kingdom residents went to look for a royal seed to help us with our journey, but got lost. And when Mario reaches the final level, we just find them, free them, and get the royal seed. No boss battle, no castle, we just get it. Which felt a bit of a flaccid way to end the world. Especially considering the whole time I was getting the royal seed, I was expecting something to go wrong and someone was gonna steal it. Maybe I just need to stop playing Luigi's Mansion 3, a game that makes me think things are going well, but no, f me, I guess. We also have shops where we get to, like in Mario Odyssey, spend the purple coins we find in levels as currency at the store and buy wonder seed, badges, one ups, and these things called stand ins. They are apparently for online play where you leave one behind and other players can see it. I personally didn't care for it, I never used any of these, so that's why I bought all of them. Now the overall aesthetic of the game is fun, bubbly, positive. Spread throughout the game like a virus are these flowers that are voiced over providing happy feedback and some really cute commentary which helps add to this game's incredible charm. Speaking of voiceovers, it's time to finally address the elephant in the room. Not that one. This is the first game without Charles Martinet being the voice of Mario. He retired earlier this year and Nintendo picked his successor in Kevin Afghani. Now it is sad to see Martinet go, he was the voice of a lot of people's childhood. Mine too. Hell, he didn't just do Mario, he did pretty much everybody. Now as sad as I was to hear about it, I did finally accept that it was the best way to go about it. If it was the worst way Charles Martinet had to retire the role, the replacement would feel a little bit morbid. So they eased us into it and honestly, Afghani did a pretty good job. Usually I'm not a fan of iconic voices being recast. I miss the OG voice actors for Kratos, Sonic, and Sergeant Price to this day. But Afghani did splendid and I judged this based on the fact that when I was playing the game, I sometimes hardly noticed. But besides the Wonder Flowers, the levels on their own are by themselves very fun and well designed. Besides the visuals that are great, the actual platforming is really good stuff and amazingly crafted with so many secret and hidden areas to find. Throughout my time playing this, I kept getting a nagging feeling on the game design having a beautiful blend of Super Mario World and Don Kong Country. Just a lot of similarities in certain areas that really took me back. Especially when the game transferred us to the background which screamed Don Kong Country Returns and when shortly after we had a beautiful silhouette level, I shed a f***ing tear. I tell you, those were my favorite. I think I want to marry you. A lot of new enemies introduced too, a lot of them I instantly loved like the bouncy hippos, the popcorn poppers, and the melon piranha plants. Some old fashioned enemies like Goombas and Koopas returned, but one enemy that surprised me and made me so happy because it was my most beloved enemy in Mario games, Sparky! Yep, in Super Mario World, I just love these guys, they looked so cute to me I just wanted to pinch their cheeks at my own expense. Now even though I nagged the badge system, I didn't really care about it the further I got into the game. I accepted it for what it was and moved on. But the one truly negative thing I have to say about this game is... The boss battles. Classic Mario! So the game has seven bosses. Three of them are these Bowser engines found at the end of three Bowser ships. We gotta reach the end of it and press the button. Wow. At the end of these three castles, we fight Bowser Jr. And it's going to be exactly what you expect it to be. It's the same old shit. While I'm happy that they didn't just reuse the Koopa Links or fucking Boom Boom, it's still so disappointing. But lo and behold, we arrive in the big finale, our gigantic final battle to save the world and it's a giant Bowser head with floating hands. God, Nintendo loves these types of boss battles, huh? Don't get me wrong, the presentation of the finale is pretty cool, but honestly when I saw the fight I knew to take out the hands first because that's just what Nintendo has you do every f***ing time, and I beat it my first try, it wasn't hard. But anyway, Bowser's defeated day is saved. My thoughts? I'm so sad it's over. 
because Super Mario Wonder is such an amazing game. It's constantly fun and engaging with how it never feels like we are doing the same thing over and over again. Hell, I call it damn well perfect. The only downside is the boss battles. The level designs are great, the wonder seeds are so fun and creative, the bubbly attitude brings joy to the player, the secrets are fun to discover, the difficulty while not being the hardest platformer out there, it still has levels that are more challenging than previous 2D Mario's offerings. When I'm even having fun running around the overworld, you know you're playing a great game. This game feels new while at the same time feeling nostalgic. I can't put it into words. I get that same inner child joy playing this game like I do when I go back and play Super Mario World. So I'm ready to make a bold statement. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is the greatest 2D Mario game of all time. That's right, better than any new Super Mario Bros. game, better than Super Mario Bros. 3, better than...